Okay. So the command is mkdir dir1 space dir2. And if you do tree, you just see dir1 and 2. Okay, and then in dir1 we have folder 1 and folder 2. So now what I'm going to do is mkdir I'm looking at folder 1 and inside folder 1 there is student 1. So I'm going to say folder 1 and then inside student 1. Hey Mr. Zephyr, can you hear me? Yeah. Go ahead Mirza. Um, I'm not able to hear you. Anybody else have the same problem? Even I am not able to hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. I was on mute yep. actually. Thank you. Okay, so looking at the picture here within uh, my home directory, I have dir1 and dir2. So that's what I made dir1 and dir2. Now, inside dir1, there is a, a directory called folder1 and student1. So, what I'm going to do is Keeping, keeping my present working directory, I'm going to say mkdir-p. Now I'm going to give the path here. Since dir1 is already created, what the system will do is it will ignore it. Okay, and actually it knows the way to create the rest of the other directories. So I'm going to say dir1 slash folder one slash student one. Okay, remember folder one and student one doesn't exist right now. So what I'm going to do is instead of for me to going into dir one and in there creating folder one, then going into folder one, then creating student one, I'm doing I'm doing all this in one uh, one command. Make directory hyphen p okay means preserve that means if dir1 is already there keep preserve it don't don't mess with it and whatever the directory is not there continue making those directories since we have already given the path here it will continue on making the directory for you okay i'll hit enter and if i do tree And over here, we just have dir1 here. So we have dir1, under dir1, we have folder1 and student1. Similarly, looking in here, I'm going to say, I'm going to say dir1, and inside dir1, I have binder1, right? So same command, I'm going to do it here. Clear the screen, mkdir. And then I'm going to do dir2 slash binder1. Before that, I'm going to do hyphen p. Okay. So if I do tree, I got the result I wanted. Now inside binder1, we have file. Uh, touch file one and file two. So what you do is the, the, the good way to do is, is just go inside binder one and create uh, three files there. So I'm going to do dir2 and binder one. I'm going to say touch file one, file two, file three. 
file one, file two, file three. What I'm gonna do is I'll hit enter. And if I do ls, I should have three files there. And if I do a uh, tree from my home directory, and I should see file one, file two, file three in dia binder one. Okay, and student one, I have stu one, stu two, stu three. So I'm gonna go down this path here. Can somebody help me? How do I get into a student one? Using dir1 slash folder student one. Over here, I'm gonna say touch stu1, stu2, stu3. Okay, and I hit enter, I do ls. The files are there. I go back to my home directory and I do tree and I see uh, stu1, stu2, stu3 and this should, it is actually matching here. Now you might, it might look a little bit odd here because uh, I put dir1 on the left side and dir2 on the right side. This was on purpose so that it kind of throws you off, okay? So the next command is copy file one and file two. So, so it was a good uh, thing to see that you guys did uh, some research and uh, were able to copy two files simultaneously. So what you do is copy, cp is the copy command, and you go down the directory, dir2 slash binder, and in here either you could do file one and file two, or what you could do is uh, uh, you could use the curly brackets. And you do uh, file one, comma, file two. And then now you have to give the destination. Where are, where are you copying this? So you're copying this into dir1 and folder two. So I'm gonna go dir1 folder two. Oh, Okay, see, I didn't create folder two in here. So I need to do that first. So what I'm gonna do is mkdir, dir1, mkdir, hyphen p, folder two, okay. I'm sorry, dir1 slash folder two, dir1 folder two. If I do three, okay, you see folder two here. So I'm copying file one, file two from here, it's gonna go into folder two. So I'm gonna do cp, dir2, Okay, then binder one. Then I could, what I could do is file one. Most of the time in your uh, job environment, you will be just copying one file or the whole folder. Okay, and then where are you copying this? You're copying to dir one slash folder two. And you bring the line back here and do file two. And if you do three, you have file one and file two from binder one got copied over to folder two. And the path for folder two is dir1 and, and then inside dir1 is folder two. Okay, and then the next is move. This time we are moving this thing here. So what you could do is 
you could uh, bring the same command back instead of copy I do MV okay and I'm moving file 3 and where am I moving to I'm moving to folder 1 so the file was over here it got cut from here and pasted in here so the original location the file got deleted from the original location okay and then the last one you see is move the folder uh, C2 directory 2 so this is the folder here all this folder is going to come and sit in here okay so I'm going to do MV hyphen RF I don't I think I am uh, give me one second here So what you could do is, um, anybody tried using a, a period when you're trying to move this? I'll show you how you can move this here. The last one is move folder, uh, move this folder here. So I'm moving student one into DIR2. What you could do is, you could go into CD DIR2 and you do PWD you stay there and then you could use um, this location here to copy it in the present working directory okay so what you do is MV and you do uh, the location DIR1 And then you go to um, why is it not auto taking? So what you do is you do MV. Uh, the location of the file student so this is sitting in dir1 folder 1 student 1 dir1 folder 1 student and then where am i copying into i'm copying into present working directory so here is a good thing yeah you don't have to worry about giving you the path of the present working directory okay so you're telling the system to copy this folder into your present working directory okay so do you have to put the one after student uh do i you have to do what 
do you have to put the one after student? Yeah, that's why I got the error message here. Because student doesn't exist. Student one does exist. Why is he saying no file or directory? Mm. Okay, so one thing I forgot to tell you is when you're moving a directory, you have to give the full path, I think. MV slash uh, home slash Zuffer slash dir one. Okay. Folder one student one folder one student one and you just give it a space there and a period so if you do ls here you should have a student directory there So the student directory was sitting in a folder one from there it got moved to student one here so i'm going to make a note here that when moving the directory you have to give the full path I think the absolute path is necessary because you don't want to uh, you don't want to be moving the wrong directory with the same name all right so it is possible that you could have the same name directory somewhere else inside the operating system would you all would agree with that I could have uh, in here I have a student one here right I could definitely have student one directory here and here everywhere I want okay so to prevent that to prevent the mistake what will happen is move command will require moving the folder with the full directory uh, full absolute path Okay, so we have done all this here uh, and last question is what is the relative path of binder one? So binder one, I clear this, I'm at home directory and I do tree. From tree, the relative path for binder one is dir2 slash binder1 that is the relative path and uh, okay so we are done with it what is the absolute path for folder 2 okay so what is the absolute path for folder 2 absolute path for folder 2 is slash home slash zuffer slash dir1 slash folder2 okay this is the absolute path and uh, go to folder2 using the absolute path from home directory so I'm going to go to folder2 from the home directory cd slash home 
slash dir1 oh no zafar dir1 and then folder 2 so I use the absolute path to get in here I could have definitely used the related path also from folder 2 go back to your home directory so pwd so I am here in folder 2 from here you have to go in here directory 1 and from there you have to go to your own home directory so can somebody help me with this cd what how do I go back to uh, home my home directory anybody cd double double dot dot slash dot dot yeah very good you're welcome it, it throw me into the home directory here why why I'm using twice here because it just, it's obvious here you just use once twice and here you will jump back in here okay so once you use double dot from here you go into here and use another dot here from here you go into here okay it, it takes a little bit of practice here but it's not that complicated okay all right good now the next is the last okay it says go to binder using relative path okay where is binder one here's binder one so relative path would be dir2 slash binder1 cd dir2 oh, slash binder1 so anytime you type pwd it gives you the absolute path that is that comes a uh, handy a lot and were you able to use the period in any of the assignment when making move or copy you could definitely use a period whenever you want one such good example is when I copied the when I did the move command okay I think this is a little bit too big here let me change it back here appearance uh, let me exit and come back in again. Okay. Okay, so that's your uh, assignment. So everybody did a fantastic job here. I'm really happy everything is everybody is uh, getting a hang of this okay so please keep up and then as the class moves around this will be really important because all this thing uh, matters here when we're gonna start using it a little later all these commands in combination with other commands okay Aslam uh, before we proceed further I am not able to log into my party session can you help me with that please yeah, what is the error you're getting? It says host does not exist. Yeah, so in here, you should have saved uh, your IP address in here. And then you should be typing the correct host. Are you Still typing 71.57.95.5? In the default setting, I'm entering the host name, it's not working, and the number is not working there. Uh, so do I do anything to the default settings or something? In the host name, just use the number 7157.95.5. Okay. Can you take a yeah. picture and put and it in, several a, times. in the WhatsApp group? Take a picture and put it in WhatsApp group. Okay.
I posted it. Okay. I am able to open on my phone though. No, you look closely. You're you're not typing. You're ty you're supposed to type a period there. You're typing a uh, exclamation. How's that gonna work? Type a period, which is right next to the question mark key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, okay so moving along. <clears throat> Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and everybody go ahead and remove everything from your folder. Go back to uh, your home directory. Do P, do CD and hit enter. And do PWD. And if you do LS, if you have anything in there, go ahead and remove it. RM hyphen RF and an asterisk. When you do that, everything from your directory is gone. Okay. Let me know when you're ready there, then I'll move forward. We are, we are ready. Okay. So now, let's continue on. Uh, give me one second here. Today's 14th, right? Yeah. Oh, today's uh, Pakistan Day. Anybody here from Pakistan? Yes, Pakistan? sir. Mirza, so Pakistan Independence Day. You have any yes, plans? Yes, thank you. Happy Independence Day. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow is India. Thank you, thank you. Ah, oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Where are you from, Mr. Zafar? India. India. Okay, okay. So tomorrow is your day then? No, man, every day is my day. <laughs> <sighs> Mine was on 7, August 7. Niger where? Nigeria? Ivory Coast, Cote d'Ivoire. Ivory Coast, right? Yes, sir. Oh, they have, what do they have there? British or Dutch? Say again. Who do you get an independence from? British or Dutch? Uh, I think it's, yes, 1960. No, no, which country? French. 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 Huh? I was asking which country um, Ivory Coast got independence from? Oh, France. 
France. Oh, France, okay. Yeah, France. Okay, so we're going to continue with move command. Here's the shocking thing you're going to learn about move command. Okay, everybody, clear your screen and do touch file one and hit enter and do ls. Okay, everybody should have file one in there. Now, let's do MV file one, file two. Okay, and hit enter. Don't do LS yet. So can somebody tell me what happened when I do file one and file two? What might have happened here? Yeah, I, I think it probably replaced file one with file two. Yeah, it no. replaced file one with file two. Okay. When it replacing file one with file two, it also renaming it. Okay. So here's a shocking thing, move command is used for um, for renaming the file okay so why is that uh, that's how it is I would say I wish I know much more about that but uh, So what really happens is when you, you're using a move command, you're moving a file within the same location here. So this is the move command. So Mr. Zafar, when it gets renamed, it doesn't uh, delete any contents of the file, folder or file, right? No, it does not. It keeps, it, okay. it keeps the content as is. It's a different name. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. So what, what the system is doing is actually moving source to destination, but since source and destination are the same location, it says, oh, I cannot keep two, two, two files with the same name in same place, so I'm gonna rename it. The, the curly brackets are used for uh, uh, making multiple files or is it also used for making multiple uh, folders? Why are you asking that question? We're not talking about curly brackets yet. No, I had that question before when you were explaining. Because I, I was writing down the notes, so I missed that part, writing down. Now, uh, we'll just move, move uh, just concentrate what I'm showing here, okay? So we'll talk about that later. So, okay. source, and this is a destination, right? Okay, so since source and destination are same, what the system would do is system would end up renaming it. Okay, so
Okay. So, <clears throat> okay, so let's, um, I'm going to show you a little bit more in here, why all this is happening here. Okay, so I'm going to say move command. Renaming file or directory. This is possible if it's in if it's in the same location that means directory okay so since source and destination are in same location system renames the file or folder it just renames it Okay, so let's see here. It does it automatically or can we also rename it? No, you are, you are re renaming it. You are using the move command to rename it. And if I want to put the file name as a different one, like say file one uh, to file to instead of file to if I'm putting it as Riaz or anything. Yeah, so move, if you, it's in the same uh, location, then it will definitely move it to the different name. So here, I'm going to say move file to. Okay, so I have file to here, right? Move file to, and I'm going to rename it to something else, right? So I'm going to yes. rename it to Chicago and hit enter. If you do LSF and L, so file two is gone. But the the file two is the same file as Chicago. Chicago. Okay, the inside uh, the content is just rename it. Okay. The reason it's doing is you should be doing it because you're telling the system to you're using the move command in this context to rename the file. And I think it's going to keep the uh, timestamp here. So let me see. Oh, you know what? It probably will give you the new timestamp. But I, I will tell you later on how we're going to look at the timestamp and all that here, how those things are, uh, are useful later on. OK, but for now, just remember, if you, if you are, if the source is the same and the destination is the same PWD. So we are not giving like we are not moving like file two and then giving uh, the name of the directory and another directory and then uh, giving the name in there. It doesn't work that way. In that scenario, what will happen is the file or the folder get moved. Actually, cut and paste will happen. It will preserve the same file name. But in this case. You use the move command to rename it.
what is the purpose of renaming a file? It doesn't actually change the content, doesn't have any, but what is the major uh, purpose of that? So... Why do you want to rename a file if it is the contents are going to remain the same? Yeah, so what will happen is sometimes uh, you will see a system generated file here. Okay, this is a little bit off topic, but I should, I must show you here. Uh, let me go into CDR log. And these are some system generated files here, right? So can you enlarge your screen so I'm not able to? You see it now? Okay. So some of these files are system generated files here, right? So what you might want to do is you have to send this uh, file log to an application team or somebody and uh, they wouldn't understand what is this here, like a boot.log and then date. So what you could do is you could rename the file. For example, uh, this is a boot log from today or whatever and then you keep the date in there. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna move, uh, do it here but you use the move uh, command to make it look like uh, the file name. It's just like a file name if you are sending a file name to somebody. Okay, so in real, in real time scenario, it, it is effective. Yeah, it is effective if you're giving it to uh, people who are not uh, inclined on the Linux side, okay? Oh, okay. So the, in their scenarios, it will be really effective here. Okay, so, so the, uh, the the guy who's on the other side, he should be like easy easy to understand it. Yeah, you could give the file name and then say this is the file uh, okay. uh, or log name or whatever, and then you give the date in it, and then send it to them. Okay, so that is a good way to communicate or uh, give it a good name to the file name that may uh, have a problem for other people to understand. But in uh, in uh, simple terms, move is just uh, you could use it to rename the file. Okay. So if we are moving, if the, if we are using MV and then source to destination, then it. Uh, cuts and paste it to a different uh, file from the set to directory to directory, right? Yeah. And then if you are using just move and then rename, renaming the file also, so it can be used for remaining file, renaming files as well. Yeah. So. So here we, for renaming, we don't need to. Uh, if it is in the same directory, we don't need to just specify the source and destination. In, in essence, you are. You're uh, giving the source is file one and destination okay. is file two, but system detects that, oh, file one and file two are happy. All this move is happening in the same exact location. It gives, okay. it renames the file. So we can't rename uh, a file from a different directory to a different directory. When you're doing it, it will actually move the file. No, from a different, from two different directories. Yeah, it will move the file for you. Okay. So you have to create, you have to, uh, you have to name the source and path, correct? Yeah, source and path must be in the same location. Okay. So here, let me explain this to you here. Let's do ls. So I have Chicago here and PWD. And where is Chicago sitting in here? Chicago is sitting in the PWD. Zafar. Oh, okay, so now I want to rename the Chicago. So the Chicago source, source is MV Chicago. And then for example, if you want to move it to some other location here, home slash uh, Najam, right? 
in this in this scenario it will keep the name as same as Chicago and then it will move there okay it will move there and the name would be sh still be Chicago okay and when you do LS here Chicago will be gone from here it will be present in Najam but if I do uh, Chicago here and I do New York it will change uh, the name of directories yeah from so the, na the name of the directory will be just renamed here you see New York same exact file or directory it will be there in fact if you notice here it's keeping that date stamp here yes 11.59 yeah okay only the file name has changed So in a real-time work scenario, you, you if you have to give it to someone else, then rename it first and then send it to the other so that it, it is understanding is for, for his understanding it will become easy. It is true. Yeah. Okay. okay. And you could also rename the file here. What happens is sometimes the system write the logs to a specific file here, right? And if that file is getting too big. We just rename it and then system will start writing the original, create a new original file name and we'll start writing to it. That way you're tricking the system, writing it to the new name uh, so that the old file can be removed or analyzed or moved somewhere else. In essence, what is happening is when system is running, it's, it's collecting a lot of data and uh, doing the logs and all that. I'll show that later on, but it's too early in the game for you all to, uh, uh, for me to explain all that here, okay? So let's move on. So similarly, let me uh, clear this and um, let me do LS here. I have New York in there, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a directory, mkdir, okay? And then I'm gonna uh, give it a name, uh, Linux. Okay, and I have a file and a directory now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move New York into Linux, MV, New York, and I'm moving it to Linux, okay? Now in this scenario, what is happening is it's cutting from here and putting it inside Linux here. So if I do LS here, there shouldn't be New York, but where is New York? It's sitting in Linux here. It got moved from slash home slash Zephyr to it got uh, from uh, from slash home slash Zephyr to slash home slash Zephyr slash Linux. And this is where New York is sitting. Okay, now let me uh, rename the Linux MV LS hyphen L. Okay, so the timestamp is uh, 1217 a minute ago. So if I do MV Linux and I'm gonna move it to Windows and if I do LS here, Linux is now renamed as Windows here. But if I do tree, the content of inside is gonna be preserved as well as if the file is has any content inside the file, the content of that file will be preserved too. All it did was renamed it. So now I could confidently say that it is just renaming it and it's keeping the, all the timestamp and everything as same as original. And the name of the file Linux that gets deleted permanently or it's still, it is still somewhere else? No, it's gone. It's renamed it. Gone. Yeah. So if I show you it in, in simple terms here, so I have, let me create a file name here Okay, I created a file name, uh, Linux, right? And then in here, I come here, right click. When you do right click and you have a rename option, and then I'm gonna uh, give it a name Windows. Okay, so it's the same exact file, but it got renamed, that's all it is, nothing more to it. 
but in uh, in the Linux environment, we are using that with a command move mv command. Okay, so so we already saw today that uh, we used a move command to rename the file or the folder here. Move command is also used for moving the file and folder around the system. That was last week. Uh, yeah, right here. You moved here. You moved the folder here in this command. And you you move the you copy the com oh okay yeah so wait a minute here and you call moving the files here okay so all these commands you're gonna use it interchangeably but um, don't worry about all this here just remember this and just practice it as much as you can and then you will get a hang of it Okay, so these are the basic, basic of operating system using Linux. So I'm gonna see here. Okay, any questions around this? No, I think we're good. Okay, good. Okay, so let's see here. And... Uh, Okay, once we are good here, so now let's move on. This is a brand new command we're gonna learn now. Okay, so the brand new command is echo. This command repeats this command repeats what is so this command repeats the text as output So everybody on your screen type echo and type this is Linux and hit enter. So did it make sense here? I, I type in here and uh, did it make sense here? This command repeats the text as output. Okay, so you type echo, this is Linux, minus echo, it repeats everything here. Everybody got it? Yes, sir. 
so I say echo today is uh, Pakistan day what is gonna repeat anybody what is gonna be today, output today is Pakistan day yeah there you go and I say echo and hit enter what happens so it gives a blank the output is actually uh, out, it is actually there is nothing in front of echo right so yes. in this scenario what is happening if there is nothing in front of it it's giving you a blank line so actually the echo command is working here it's giving you echo blank means is giving you a blank line This is Linux will be output. Okay, similarly, I'm going to copy this part here. And here is going to be the same thing. Uh, today is Pakistan Day. So this will be our output here, okay? You see it here. And if there is nothing blank, that means blank is blank. It, it does give out, output is blank. So it's nothing in there will be output. In fact, it will give us a blank line. Okay, any questions here? Okay, now. So what is the purpose of echo, sir? The repeated test. What is the purpose of echo when it is giving you what you are typing, the same thing, right? So, oh no. Uh, yeah, the purpose is if you if you're telling this uh, this is this line is Linux and this line is uh, Pakistan Day, so it's repeating this error. Right? Echo command repeats it. So later on we'll see how we could use the echo command to our advantage. Later on we want to give it a space there somewhere, so we I'm use. I'm not the able echo to hear anything. Anybody else is having a problem? I'm fine. I'm fine too. Coleman, Mirza, can you hear me good? Yes, sir. I can hear you good. Yeah. Yes, I can hear you too. Is it I the same with everyone or just that I am not able to hear anyone? Yeah. Uh, Najam, you are, you are having an issue. You could dial in. Okay, I'm sending him a message here. Okay, so uh, 
now now we learned a lot of a lot of uh, commands here right so yeah, what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how to run the multiple uh, multiple commands simultaneously okay so So I'm going to clear the screen. So from the commands we learned so far, right? Can somebody give me your favorite command? You guys must have a favorite command by now, right? Mirza, what, what is your favorite command? Okay. My my favorite comment is VIM, VIM, space, comment, that test. No, that is, no, 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 don't go there yet, man. You're, the okay. one we learned so far, okay? <coughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay. PWD? Mine is PWD. So if you're running a multiple commands here, I'm going to have to do a semicolon, okay? If you look at the keyboard, this is the semicolon. Second, second from uh, enter key. You have an enter key here. Then you have a, a single quote and double quote. And then this is a semicolon. The one which is turned on is semicolon here. Okay, I did PWD and tree semicolon. Okay, LS semicolon, LS hyphen L semicolon, who. And if I have all these commands in line here, I'm telling the system to run all these command right one after another, okay? So when I do that, boom. One, two, three, four, five. Five commands have run simultaneously. But it is, it is simultaneous because it's uh, only few commands is right one after another here whatever command you put in is going to run that command first first you're going to run pwd tree ls lsfnl and echo or uh, who okay so pwd and this is the output for pwd and tree this is the output for tree okay then it did ls. So this is the output for ls. ls have an l. This is the output for ls have an l. No, uh, ls have an l is this is the output here. And who, this is the output for who command. These are, these are the people who are logged in right now. Okay, so now, anybody have any questions now? How, how I made uh, five commands run simultaneously, right next to each other, right after each other, I should say. Okay. <coughs> Please ask a question here because it looks like uh, everybody is confused here. Can so, we use these uh, orders in like different order too? Yeah, All these yeah. can be like uh, switched any back order. and forth? Any order oh. you want. Any okay. order you want. But you have to realize that the order you send it, that's what the output is. Okay. I just wanted to ask you one thing. I missed out a lot of things because my sound was off. I, I just got uh, re-logged in. 
so i missed a major part of this session so so far uh, what i'm showing you here is so far we've been running only single command here and there right now what we do i just missed after move after what you did after move you missed after move yes so we were renaming the file after that i just uh, my voice was uh, some I, I couldn't hear you at all so okay so give me one second here so i tried to uh, we did echo after that okay so we did echo so okay. when you type echo and then type this is linux go ahead and type on your computer on my booty yeah echo then space this is linux and hit enter okay then so LS. your output would be this is linux that's what you should see echo you should not see on your screen correct no so i have to first come out of my whole thing clear the directory and come back to the to home directory yeah come to to home directory and then echo slash uh, space linux correct yeah so oh, okay i'm just seeing linux then if i do ls right no don't do ls i didn't say ls okay type so echo I'm and right. then type a sentence there this is linux okay oh i just see linux right correct I can, after that i can see linux and then i'm back to the prompt najam server one so right before that you see the output here this is linux yes. Yes. So similarly, whatever you type here, you type like a whole book before echo. So what will happen is uh, it will just repeat this part. So I type in today is Pakistan day. I type echo today is Pakistan day and hit enter. What happens is echo command. Just repeat this oh, yes, part. Yes. And if I just hit echo and hit enter, uh, there is nothing in front of echo. Nothing so it gave you the blank line. And then I say echo Najam dial in. Everyone can hear me. I type that in, and then the output is this here. So echo command, you could type whatever in front of echo command. It will repeat it for you. If nothing is in front of echo command, then it will give you a blank line. Okay. Then moving on, we uh, everybody. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm showing you here the everybody's favorite command here so let me see my favorite command has been so far pwd and then what i'm showing you here is running multiple commands simultaneously okay so pwd okay. semicolon then what i did was uh, i typed in a uh, tree semicolon so semicolon is the one right uh, uh, right, uh, the third one from enter key on the left side. On the uh, yeah, you have enter, and then you, you have quote, single quote, double quote, and then semicolon. Yeah. So we have pwd three, and then I type ls, and I type who, and I type ls and l, and hit enter. So what happened here is one, two, three, four, five. I ran five commands simultaneously. So, but actually it's running one after another. So PWD, and this is the output for PWD. Tree, this is the output for tree. LS, this is the output for LS. And I ran who and this is the output for who command. And ls have an L, I ran all these commands here. So when you're running multiple commands in a single line, this is called bash scripting. I'm sorry, no, shell scripting. So note, running multiple commands in single line 
in single CLI is considered shell script. If you want, you could have couple hundred lines in there. You could put like couple hundred times in there. It will do it for you. Let's do let's do copy, paste, and then oh, get off. So now I'm running the same commands like 10 times here, boom. The output is gonna be 10 times. See? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have 1, 2, 3. All these commands are gonna repeat. Or whatever you put it in here is gonna be run, executed on the CLI. That's what I'm trying to get at, okay? So here, you can bunch you can bunch some commands and run on CLI. So that is what we did here and all of them has this output here. So you should have five different output for five different commands. That's what you have here. We ran 10 different commands here and then the output is 10 different commands. Okay. Any questions? All right, let me go ahead and go back here and go through some other commands here. So, if you do ls here, I'm going to do rm hyphen rf and asterisk. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm running a command ls hyphen l, semicolon, pwd, semicolon. Then I'm going to do touch, file1 semicolon okay and then in in the same thing here i'm gonna say who who is logged in right now then i'm gonna say touch file 2 then i'm gonna say uh mkdir dear folder one All these things is gonna run right now and touch command file and all this is gonna be executed. The moment I hit enter, all this would be ready for you. Then I do LSF and L also. Boom. See, I started off with nothing here. I did LS, LSF and L and uh, this is uh, the LSF and L. There is nothing in there so nothing showed up. PWD, this is your PWD touch file one it did that because when you do touch file one you don't see on the anything on the screen then it did who this is the who command then touch file two it did that and then mkdir folder one it did that mkdir folder one there is no output here but the output is showing up here because you're running ls have an l here in the end, you are an LSFNL. This is the output here. Okay, so you could see how you could build up on this. If you want to build up on this, if you have, want to have like 100 commands in one line, you could do that. Okay, so, but right now, as long as you understand the concept, you're really good. Okay, so. But in real time scenario, do we have to do we actually write hundred commands in one in one go? I mean, if if not hundred, I, I do like 15, 20 commands. I do that, yeah. Okay. I mean, now now you see the things are getting complex here. At the same time, okay. it is very simple. Okay, all you're doing is combining all the commands together and running. 
LSFNL, you already learned that. PWDs, you already learned that. Touch, you learned that. Who, you know that. Touch file two, you know that. Make directory, you know that. All you do but is a little bit asking. automating it here. Okay. All right. So this is the beginning of the scripting here. So we will build up on this and I'll show you how to run the script later on. Script is nothing but running a bunch of commands, putting it in the file and running it. So that would be a separate topic. We'll touch, touch on that uh, almost towards the end of the class. <clears throat> Any questions? Let's take a uh, let's take a good break here. Let's see how long. Yeah, let's take a fifteen bre minute break. We'll be back at uh, twelve central, and then we'll continue. And if you have any questions, uh, please gather your questions. I'll talk about it. Okay, break starts now. Okay, I'm back here. So, <clears throat> right. we'll go another uh, 40 minutes and we'll wrap for the day, okay? <coughs> okay, guys, so stop me wherever you're not understanding, but so far. Everything is uh, easy. It's not that difficult. You just have to you just have to run it. Make sure you're running while I, while you are watching on the screen here. And if possible, connect from have a Webex in from two sessions, um, or um, not two sessions, but uh, you keep a Webex window on one computer and then connect from. Uh, party to another computer that would be great most of the time I think everybody of you have uh, iPads right so open a Webex on iPad and that will free up your computer or a laptop and then you could run the command simultaneously with me okay please do that if you have Webex uh, if you have an iPad or extra computer it will be good for your own benefit can we do it from the next session yeah, next session, whenever. So, if you, I mean, there is no restriction how many times you could log into Webex. So that's the good thing. And also, Webex has, uh, Webex has the dial-in. Uh, um, you could dial-in also if you're. Uh, I think let me show you uh, the dial-in information. If you go on to the Webex control, you could see like uh, the dial-in information. I'm trying to find out dialing. Oh, it's in the chat. When I put it in a group chat, the dialing information is there as well as the uh, ID, right? Let me just confirm that. Yeah. You have an option by join, join by phone, and then uh, there is a, a phone number and then the access a code. When you put it in there, you will join into this WebEx. That way, uh, that way you will free up your hands and then you could log in or listen in from your cell phone. All right, so moving along, we have seen uh, uh, some easy task here. So from here, this will be beginning of the script here, okay? This is considered a shell script because we are running several commands simultaneously and it will run it for you. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, work on one command. It's called alias. Alias. Okay, so what you could do is you could create your uh, own command.
and this is good for running multiple commands so let me clear the screen here so everybody go ahead and type alias a l i a s and then i'm going to type zafar everybody type your name okay then an equal sign and in here i'm going to type two commands here who is logged into the system and uptime no don't use uptime because i haven't told you about uptime yet and then pwd okay type alias zafar alias just name and then yeah equal sign and then uh, put in a, a quote actually do double quote double quote is right on uh, you have to use the shift and a double quote right next to the enter key see double quote is right here this is the enter key right next to so you have to use shift and double quote that will bring up the double quote on your screen okay and hit enter so what happens is in the background it created a command named zuffer and it will run these two commands so how do you see those commands just simply type alias okay so when you type alias you will see some built in commands here but look for the one that says alias uh zuffer equal um, who pwd when you type alias you should see a bunch of out output here but just concentrate on the one you just created so it is alias najam equal sign uh, inverted commas who slash pwd yeah correct. good so now just type i'm going to type zafar but you're going to type najam and it will execute those commands whatever these two commands in here it will uh, execute for you so it executed the command who and our next command i have is pwd so it executed the command who and pwd so there should be space between all these things or just no if i am showing you space then there is space there is no space then there is no space so if i type okay. just uh, zafar or najam you sh the command should execute is there a slash between who and pwd no there is not a slash that's a semicolon So this is a semicolon, right? On your keyboard, you see a semicolon right here. Now let's make a little complex command here, okay? So I'm going to say alias zafar one equals quotes, and I I'm going to say uh, I like who command. I want to know who's logged in, and I want to say ls hyphen l. Uh, most of the command times you use uh, alias command to look into see uh, uh, the system information here okay so 
So what I'll do is for me to see what is what is coming up on the screen clearly, I'm gonna say just echo and do semicolon. When you do blank echo, it'll just create an extra line for you. And then uh, I could do history also if I want. Can you do Cal? Cal? Calendar? You said C-A-L? Yep, C-A-L. You could do any command you want. But hold off on that. I, I don't think I showed you all those commands yet. So PWD. Well, you got the idea here. You could fill in whatever you want in here. Okay, and hit enter. And if you do alias again, now you should have a previous command, Zafar also and Zafar 1. Zafar and Zafar 1 are independent of each other. So if I run uh, Zafar 1, it will run those commands associated with Zafar 1. Okay, please don't get confused here, okay? Can you please start it up with the alias command once again? Yeah, so alias is you're creating yeah, you're creating a, a command with the name alias. That means alias is alias, right? Everybody has a first name and last name and uh, sometimes you have an alias, right? Some other name that is not official on your birth certificate, right? So it's, it's the same exact thing here is alias is you're creating an alias and then you're giving it a name. And this name, when you run this name, whatever you have created earlier, it will be executed. So I'm typing alias najam equal sign. And then in then. quotes, put in the commands you want. Follow so you said to put who and then uh, colon yeah, uh, semicolon. Make sure it's semicolon, okay? It's, it's semicolon, a different. Yeah. But semicolon, yeah. Semicolon and then a PWD, right? Uh, echo. I have echo. I mean, I mean, do whatever you want, but in this case, uh, I did echo, L, then semicolon, LSF, and L, semicolon, PWD. Okay, I can do at WHO, who, and then semicolon, tree. Well, it's up to you, however you want it. It's just the concept I'm showing you. Once okay. you get the concept here, you got the idea. So I end up with the, with the uh, uh, quotes, right? Yeah, you, you open with quotes and close with quotes. Okay. Separated by semicolon. Yeah. So those commands, next time you're going to run... Next time you're just gonna run as a uh, you're, you're creating Najam one, right? I think so. Once you type Najam or Najam one, whatever you have created here, those will be run or executed. But I when say. I'm doing that, I I put it as alias Najam equal uh, code start code who semicolon tree semicolon history, and then I'm closing it with uh, the code. But then when I hit enter, nothing is coming up. Yeah, no, so you created now. Oh, now, okay. So this is a create, okay. Yeah, so it, it's uh, the system remembers it now. So to see what okay. system, to see what you have in the system, just type alias, nothing else. And hit enter. Oh, okay. Some of them are system built, we're not worried about that. But just zero in on the one you created. You should see, I created Zafar and Zafar 1 here. And Zafar is going to, when I run, uh, type Zafar is going to run this. And then when I type Zafar 1, it's going to run this. So it shows like something like E, G, R, E, P, color, auto. No, I said don't worry about those things. There's zero in on it. Those are the one built-in uh, system built-in here. Some things are, which are already built-in in the system. I 
and in between it is repeating the command which I have given that is majam equals one oh, sorry. So now Close. if you want to execute it just type uh, the name. In here I'm gonna type Zafar one and it will run it for you. So the whole purpose is for like one um, multiple uh, commands are just uh, compiled together in place of the name. Correct, yes. Instead of ty typing all those commands again and again, we just type our name, that's it. Yeah, but it will be okay. static. It won't be changing all the time. Okay, so that's not going to be permanent, right? These commands, they are going to be like for, once we create these commands, like I have three commands like um, who, echo, and, and ls. Yeah, so... In one place. So I created these three. So these are going to be there forever? Yeah, unless I'm going to show you how to remove it. But okay. those are the ones that's going to run with associated with that name, okay? Okay. So you were right. Yeah, it, it came after typing my name. It came up uh, as per the order. So yeah. It was who, and then the tree, and then the history. Until my last command. Yeah, all the commands. So, uh, if you in future you get savvy, you you decided to put hundred commands in there. Hundred commands will run one after another. Okay. Okay. So it comes as per the order we place them. Like, correct. Uh, correct. The first command, the second command. Okay. So now, if you want. How does it? How is it effective in uh, in real time? It's effective, right? It's writing so many commands. If you have like a hundred commands you want to run, you're running hundred commands here. And then you could copy this into another system. We'll, we'll, I'll show you how all this automation is gonna work. And if you want to get the information out of hundred systems, you copy that command into hundred systems and run it all once and it will run it for you. Instead of logging into hundred systems and doing it. That is actually coming up here. I will, I'm not going to show you now. When I, when appropriate, I'll show you all these things here. But at this moment, we are just learning the basics here. So I have alias here, and I want to get rid of the alias Zafar. Okay. All you have to do is unalias, unalias, and Zafar, and hit enter. And if you type alias. So the Zafar is gone from this list here. Okay, please do not do not uh, unalias anything other than uh, what you have created. Okay, it may cause some problem. This unalias is one word, correct? Unalias one word, space, and then the name of your alias. This alias totally disappears and there is no more, it doesn't exist anymore. No, nope, it doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't give you warning, anything like that. So, oh, so once, once it's gone, it's gone, completely finished. Yeah, as long as it's not showing in when you type alias, as long as it's not showing in here, then it's good. Bad. 
So what if we want to retrieve this thing for some for some reason that means if you accidentally delete this. No, you have to type it again. You have oh, you to, have to write the whole thing again? Yeah. So good thing is you do history. That's where history comes in. Yes. <laughs> okay. So then go back and copy and yeah. paste and then just run uh, just run um, exclamation 106 it will create for you or whatever the one that was exclamation uh, 10 1057 it will create it for you so you could see you have like a history here and uh, when you're running uh, doing the administration you could go back and see what was done in the system earlier so that it, uh, so that you could know what is the system uh, and then you could do better troubleshooting Okay, so now do LS here. If you have anything in there, type RM hyphen RF and the asterisk and hit enter. Any questions? I'm going to give a two minute pause and then I'm going to sh uh, start on the editor. Can we revisit uh, this thing once again in the alias one? Yeah. Like, go ahead and do it on your screen. Do alias and hit enter and tell me what do you have there. I don't have anything out here now. Type alias on your screen. Are you not following along? I am, but uh, you, since you, I, I have done the an alias thing, so there is nothing now. Okay, so yeah, so if you want to create new thing, just type alias. Okay. Space. Alias. And give it a name, whatever name you want to give. Just the name. In fact, let me just bring that command back here and then. Okay, and then the name you want to give. And uh, commands of your uh, commands you want to save. Okay, so you have to give the equal sign and then you have to give the um, quotes. <coughs> okay. So that should be clear enough here. When you're practicing it, you have to uh, uh, 
just follow this along and then you should be good here. Okay, so, all right, let's move along. Let's get into the editor here, okay? So everybody um, do LS. If you have anything in there, get rid of everything. So I did RM hyphen RF and a period and hit enter. So LS, nothing should be there. So I'm going to say clear and then what will happen is there is a command called VI and Okay, so VI is VI is nothing but when you have a notepad in here in your system, right? Everybody know what a notepad is in your Windows operating system, correct? It's just yes, a sir. blank notepad and then you have like a text. There is no formatting, nothing in here. Similarly, uh, there, is a, there is a notepad built in here, it's called VI Editor, okay? VI editor. So everybody type VI and then give it a name Linux and hit enter. You will it will open up a, a totally different window for you. Okay. So everybody VI space Linux and hit enter and you are into a new window called. VI editor, okay? And on top of your screen, you have your cursor here. And all these are blank. Down on the bottom here, it says Linux. That means that is the file name we have just entered. Oh, where do you go? I shouldn't have. So for everybody, this is the screen should look like. 
down on the bottom of your window, it should say Linux in quotes. And then in square bracket, it should say new file. And on the right side, it should, it should look similar to what I have here. Okay, and in here, there is a cursor all the way on the top. Okay, so what you do is push I as in India on your keyboard and you should see insert mode. And go ahead and type in there This is Linux. Hit enter for second line. This is an online Linux course. This is and then type the third line we are learning Red Hat Linux. Okay, everybody let me know when you're ready. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Down on the bottom here, it should say insert. You did I for insert. When you do I, it goes into edit mode, okay? Yes, sir. And then go ahead and type three lines in there. Three lines. And then Okay, so let me capture this top part here. Okay, now, on your keyboard, push the escape key. When you push the escape key, the insert will go away. Okay, so when you push the escape key, insert should have gone away. Now, what we need to do is, we need to save and exit, right? Yes. When there is no more insert, on your keyboard, hold the shift key and push colon. When you push shift colon, this is what you will see on the screen.
shift and colon what I'll do is it will make you go into the command mode Okay, so when you see bottom of your screen, you see colon there. That means you are in command mode. Okay, no, are you following it, Najam? Okay, and now when you put X as in Xerox, lower X, down on the bottom where the colon is, put it like lower X, X as in Xerox, and hit enter. So what happened was, you open the file, you put some lines in there, and then you save and exit. And when you do ls, you should see the file Linux in there. Now this file has some content in it. All right, I'm gonna pause here and uh, tell me who is having problem here. Anybody having issue? So, so, uh, so Professor. Yeah. So, what about if you put um, W could could W Q? Yeah, the, the I mean X works just fine. Just put X. X is also save and exit. Okay. Okay. Thanks. What did the colon and X uh, did? What was the job of colon and X? It created the files or what? I did not understand that part. Save and exit. That's what it did. Oh, it saved and exited. Okay. Do you have LS there? Do LS and you see Linux? Yes, I do see it. All right. Very good. I don't hear anybody complaining. So I assume everybody is on the same page with me. Okay, sounds great. So, now what we have now is we have a file in there called Linux here. Let's go into that file again. VI Linux. VI space Linux and hit enter, you see the content in there, okay? And we don't want to, we don't want to do any changes, anything like that. Hit shift colon and Q as in queen, lower Q. So you quit. You don't have to save anything this time. So you, all you did is you just quit out of it. You went in there, read inside the file and Q to quit out of it, okay? So I'm gonna put a note in here. <laughs> Colon X to save and exit. Okay.
now there is there is a command I want to read what inside this file here but I really don't want to go inside the file and then read what's inside the file and all that okay so for that if you quickly want to see what's inside the file do key cat c a t then do linux and hit enter the output will be the content of the file what was whatever was in that uh, file it will cat it for you it will do the output it will read the file and it will do the output here right now the cat command is working for you because we have only three lines what do you if what if you have 3000 lines so you just have to remember how you're going to use the command okay either you either you think the file is a uh, uh, very small you could just simply use cat command if not you could do vi linux and then go inside the file and take a look So what happened here is a new file is created in the PWD. Whatever directory you were working in, that's where the file will be created, okay? If you were in like some wild, wild directory like uh, hundreds of lines, hundreds of uh, subdirectories into and if you do vi and then do that it will create the file in that particular directory but for now don't worry about it right now wherever your uh, pwd is that's where you created that file linux one i'm sorry just linux so i'm gonna stop here and uh, just for the sake of it, go ahead and uh, create Linux 2 and then go in there and then uh, put like three or four lines in there and then come out of it, save and exit. So that way, practice that for tomorrow and then we're going to go deeper into the VI editor, okay? Yes, sir. All right. So please, uh, here's the thing here. Help each other out if you have a question. Put that question into the chat group, okay? Because I see some of them, uh, you guys are helping each other out. That is exactly what I want here. Everybody help each other out. And when you're helping somebody out, you are actually learning more. Okay? okay. So with that, I'm going to stop here. And then I will pick up tomorrow. And then uh, after that, keep, uh, it's keep getting... Uh, uh, you know, the uh, course will keep getting better and better. And then when you come back and look at this command, you should say, oh, these are the silliest command you could ever know. Okay, because you will be learning a lot of stuff. All right, so if no questions, I'm going to stop here and then we'll pick it up uh, where we left off. And then.